This conference will now be recorded. In the previous session, we have discussed about sharing mechanisms and we have discussed the various types of sharing mechanisms in Apex Salesforce, like the manual sharing and automated sharing and Apex sharing. How to implement the manual sharing we have discussed and how to share the record to a single user and the multiple users by creating the public groups we have discussed. And upon sharing the records through manually by using sharing button, we have identified few difficulties. To overcome those difficulties, we are using an automation mechanism that is sharing rules. By using sharing rules, we can share the records to either one or more number of users automatically based on certain conditions. So if you keep on creating some records, automatically sharing rule will fire after insertion of the record, after updating the record. In both the cases, my sharing rule will fire. It will check the conditions. If the record is meeting the specified conditions, then record will be shared to the required users automatically by default. So until the record is meeting the conditions, the access will be continued by the users. Once the record is not meeting the condition, the access will be removed from the user automatically by the sharing rule. And then we have discussed one more mechanism that is Apex sharing, which can be done through with the help of Apex programming. So not only sharing the record by using the wizard formats, that means by using mouse clicks, we can able to share the record through programmatically also by using Apex sharing mechanism. That facility is available. Now, so with this one, we are done with that OWD option private. Now, the second one, public read-only option. So what exactly the public read-only option and what it indicates, now let me explain. For example, I come to a small scenario. Assume that I'm having this account object here. As of now, we made this account object WD as private. If you make the object's vulnerability as private, record will be completely restricted record. The record will be locked, okay, which can be accessible only by the record owner and his manager. Only these two people can access, other people can't access. So that we are having the help of a sharing mechanism. Through sharing mechanism, we can share the records. Now, now if you're making the object vulnerability as published read only, then what will happen? Now, let's see. Suppose I'm making this object's OWD as public read only. Now, I'm indicating the object's OWD as public read only. Then what do you mean by this option public read only now? Whenever we are making this object's OWD as public read only now, if any of the user creates a record inside this object, 
if any of the user inside my organization he may be manager user or customer user testing user anybody also whenever a user creates a record inside my object this record is a public record public record means what everyone can access this record so not only the record owner not only his manager everybody inside the organization including the record owner and his manager the siblings also can access the records his subordinates also can access the record everybody inside the organization will be able to access the record inside this object so whenever we are making the objects wordability as public read only what are the records we are creating inside the object those records are purely public records which can be accessible by all the users available inside your organization now so in this case you can raise a question sir if my record is visible to everyone then what is the difference between me and the other users now in this case here as a record owner okay as a record owner i will be having the full control on my record along with me my manager is also having the full control on the record that means we both the people the record owner and the manager will be having the full rights that means these two people can see the records they can modify the records they can delete the records they can share the record to the required people as well so they will be having the full control on that record then what about the other users inside the organization now what is this option here read only right so in this case other users inside the organization like as my siblings they will be having only read permission my subordinate also will be having only read permission this is a functionality okay so whenever we are making the objects wordability as public read only from there onwards if any user creates a record inside the object the record is a public record which will be visible to all the users available inside the organization irrespective of the user irrespective of the profile everyone can access the record so now in this case the record owner and his manager will be having full control on the record like they can see they can modify they can delete they can share they can do whatever the operations they want now the other users inside the organization that means the siblings and the subordinates will be having only read only access here they can't modify they can't delete they can't share my record without my permission okay understand the concept this is the concept of public read only now if it is public read right then hmm. now tell me record is again public record so everybody can able to access that record record owner and his manager will be having what access full access other users read and write access here so that means they will be having read permission and write permission that means they can see they can modify but they can't delete they can't share my record here okay clear now right make a note of this one when the object's wordability has been assigned as public read only then if the user creates a new record inside the object the record will be visible to all users inside the organization all users inside the organization the record owner and his manager will get the full control on the record that is they can read edit delete and share 
other users in the organization will get read only access they can't edit delete and share the record other users like the similar way exactly we are having public read write also is a functionality Excuse me, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, tell me. Go ahead. What is your question? Ah, uh, excuse me, sir. Yes. Uh, sir, I want to ask one thing. Sir, we have been shared with four to five resume. So, which resume we have to pick and uh, means customize ourselves? Which one? Sir, we have been shared with four to five resume on our drive. Okay. So, uh, okay. so I want to know. So, which resume we should use to make our? Now I will check it out. Okay. Yeah. Okay, sir. Okay, okay. And sir, regarding one more thing, sir, there are something I means so some of the resumes are. those people who are having experience of 2.5 years to 3.8 years so i am also sir 2014 graduate so sir kindly guide me means what should i do sure sure i will definitely do that just you can okay. use that reference of the profiles and then prepare your own profile share the profile okay. with me so that i will check it out if there is any corrections are required i will make those corrections and share with you again okay so so so, so with you how we can share uh, on whatsapp Yeah, in the yes, group or yes yes and then i want okay. the profile in word format not in pdf yeah okay sir okay thank you sir done with this points
sir in public read write every user can access the data sir record data that's right okay okay sir every user can see the data but they will but be they cannot edit restricted yes they can't modify they can't delete they can't share okay sir okay sir thank you sir now the next one public read write transfer so what do you mean by this public read write transfer and how can we transfer the record ownership from one user to another user we'll see practically now now as of now we know the concept of sharing now i would like to use this word transfer you know what exactly public read write public read only up to this part we know then what is the meaning of this option transfer transferring in the sense what is the use of this option transfer moving the file from one place to another moving from one place to another place okay changing the record now so in this case now tell me what is the difference between this a transfer and sharing both are same or both are different if different how sharing means both have the access transferring is only the person with receiving have the access Okay. Hmm. Now let's see. Let me explain what exactly the difference between the sharing mechanism and the transfer mechanism, and then where we can use this at transfer and how to do this one. We'll see with manual with automation. Both. We'll see the concept here. Suppose, for example, assume that I'm having a two-wheeler vehicle. Okay, I have a two-wheeler vehicle which I purchased almost three years back. Since three years, I'm using the two-wheeler vehicle. It is working very good. Okay, it's in good condition. Today, one of my friend asked me to give my bike because he is having some personal work in some Kukat Pali and some other area. So he asked me, "Could you please give me your bike? I have a personal work. I would like to go. We'll be back in one hour." So now I'm sharing my bike permission to my friend. So even though if my bike is using by my friend, who is the owner of the bike? Myself. Still, I'm continuing as the owner of the bike. Along with me, my friend is also using my bike. What level of access this person is having? He can use my bike for some time here. Okay, he can use my bike for some time, but he can't sell it out. Okay, now I'm having the full rights. I can use the bike. I can sell it out if it is doesn't request for me. So that here I'm having the full rights. So as part of sharing, along with the owner, owner will be having the control on the record as it is. Along with the owner, other people also can access the record. This is the concept of sharing mechanism. Okay, now when coming to the transfer. For example, I'm using that bike here since three years. I'm the owner of the bike. Today, I saw a new model of bike in the market. It's looking like very good. It's a good color, good features also. I'm purchasing that bike, so I want to sell out this old one. Whenever I'm selling out this okay old bike, now this person has purchased my bike here. Okay, this person has purchased my bike. Who is the owner now? The new person here. Okay, he is the owner of the bike. Can I use that bike now? No. That means what? The complete ownership will be transferring from me to that another person here. That means I will not be able to access the record. Okay. The new person will be the owner. He can decide who can use the bike. He will be using that bike. His friends also, his family members also using that bike. But I can't use that. That means previously what happened? If it is sharing along with the owner, other people also can use. But in this case, if it is a transferring the ownership, the old owner will be losing the access. New owner will be getting full control on the record here. Okay, this is the difference here. 
So as part of this uh, transferring the record ownership, we can transfer the record ownership from one user to another user also. Then how can we transfer the record ownership? Now let's see practically here. How to transfer? Now let me show you with the practical scenario first. Now there we'll see some different concepts also. Let me go to my Salesforce arc. Now, I'm going to my account object here. I'm accessing this account record. Now I'm opening the record data loader account 10. Now tell me who is the owner of this account record now? Training batch user. Now the record owner is training batch user. The currently user is the owner of the record. Now I want to transfer this record ownership to development user. What can I do? How to transfer the record ownership? How? Hmm? Hmm. What we can do? Change owner. Okay, now we can do the change owner. Or else we can go to this particular field. Here we are having a small icon is available change owner field. Go to the account owner field. Click on change owner icon. Now we can able to select to whom you want to transfer this record ownership. Right now, training batch user is a owner. Now to whom you want to transfer? I want to transfer the record ownership to development user here. Okay, select this user development. Now whenever we are transferring the record ownership to the development user if this account record is having any related opportunities if the record is having any related cases then what about those related records you want me to transfer these related records also or only account record you want me to transfer that we can decide so now here in this case you will be having this option transfer open opportunities and account owners closure opportunities open cases closer cases also so now we can specify i want to transfer the related opportunities also it may be open it may be closed opportunities it may be open cases closer cases also along with i want to send one email notification to that development user dear development user a new record has been assigned to you so now i want to send the email notification so that send a notification email there is a checkbox is available as soon as whenever your record has been assigned to the people now we can able to inform to them boss not only your existing records today we have assigned one more new record also so now you are also the owner of this record from now onwards so you are the responsible person so that we can work on this requirement as well so that we can send some email notification also to the people click on change owner as soon as once you click on this change owner, the record ownership will be transferring to that new owner automatically. So from now onwards, he is the owner, who is the owner of this record? Development user is the owner of the record. Okay, development user. So simply we can go to the record, go to that owner field, click on change owner link and select the new owner, we can transfer. Okay, clear? now even though when you go to custom object also similar passion same passion we can do that here open the record go to that record owner field so now we are having this owner field is available right now training batch user is a owner now click on change owner button now select the user to whom you want to transfer the record ownership i'm selecting some development user send the notification over here Click on change owner, it will transfer the record ownership. Clear? Now. Understood the concept till now? Next. Now, observe one small scenario here. Let's go to the case object here. Open a case record. This is the Christian Akin case record now. I want to transfer this record ownership. Who is the owner of this record right now? Let's see. Who is the owner now? 
training batch user. I want to transfer this record ownership to development user here. Let's see what will happen in this case. Click on change owner. Any difference have you observed here? In this dialog box, did you find any difference? Previously also, just now we have verified how to transfer the record ownership. Here, did you observe anything new? Any small feature? Any additional option? What is that? Hmm? Now, what is, what is the option? Will also become the owner of the records related to all the records, not only one. Now, any new feature have you observed? Forget yeah, about this the theoretical list. part. Forget about this theoretical part. We see a big list. We can also transfer it to one of the queues or any other. Things. Right, exactly. Now, see. So there is a small pick list option is available here. Okay, there is a small pick list option. Now, what this pick list option indicates now we can able to select the owner to whom you want to transfer the record here here we are having two options are available what are those two options users and queues now that means for the lead record and for the case record the owner can be either a user or queue now so user we know that means a person we can transfer the record ownership to a person he will start working on my lead record he will start working on my case record also then what do you mean by this queue right now here what exactly a queue what a queue contains so how to create the queues in salesforce and how to transfer the record ownership to the queue with the manual with automation what kind of automation rules that we have in Salesforce to transfer the record ownership to the required queue? Now, let's see practically here. Okay. Now, whenever you are trying to be transferring the record ownership of either a lead record or a case record, for the owner, you will be having two options are available. First one, a user. Second one, a queue. So, for the lead and the case record, owner can be either a user or owner can be either a Q. Okay. Now let's see in this case here. How can we transfer the record ownership to the queues and how to configure the queue, how to make the process automated, and we will see practically today's session here. Okay. Now let's see. Make a note of this one. Transfer. By using transfer option. We can transfer the record ownership by using transfer option. We can transfer the record ownership record ownership from one user to another user. One user to another user. Now. While transferring the ownership, record ownership, the old owner will lose access and the new owner will get the full control on the record. While transferring the record ownership, the old owner will lose access and the new owner will get full control on the record. Now. Public read write a transfer option will be applicable only for lead and case objects. Case objects. Public read write a transfer option will be applicable only for the lead and case objects. Now, 
while transferring the lead or case records to the other users the new owner can be either a user or queue the new owner can be either a user or a queue so what are the lead record or what are the case record that we have for those lead records and the case records the new owner can be either your own user or queue that means we can transfer the lead record from one user to another user or from a user to queue also then we have to understand what do you mean by a queue what it contains and how to create our own queues and how the queues are different from the public groups and where all the queues information will get resides and what objects the queue supports what numbers we can have inside the queue if you are placing the record inside the queue what will happen and how the members can accept the queue records upon accepting the record from the queue by a member what will happen we'll see practically now Excuse me, sir. Yes. Uh, sir, when I was uh, when I was sharing account record manually, my login is developing user to customer user. It was showing an error like we couldn't make record share to customer user. Why? No. Check whether the user is active or not. Okay. Okay, sir. Check whether the user is active or not. That is one thing. Second one, whether that user is having the access on this account object records. Or not. Check this too. Okay, sir. Thank you. Sir, when you Done. log in with develop, sir, when you log in with development or testing or manager or customer, you, I can only we can only see the former uh, app. Why can't we see other apps? No, because for those profiles you don't have the permission for these applications. Those the are also custom level, apps, right? Even though inside the application profile level we have to grant the permission. Okay. How could we give the permission for this? During the profiles, I will show you. The next is concept that is profile. There I will show you how to grant the permission on application subjects only. Okay. Now let's see, what exactly a queue? What a queue contains, now let me explain. Come to a small scenario. For example, assume that today I have a travel plan. Okay, today I have a travel plan. I'm traveling from Sikindrabad to New Delhi. Sikandarabad to New Delhi, so that I'm having a train ticket. I'm having a train ticket, so which is a first class AC reservation. I'm having this train ticket. So now the boarding point will be the Sikandarabad. The train time will be, the arriving time will be night at 10 p.m. Okay, 10 p.m. IST today. Now. I have a travel plan to travel from Sikandarabad to some New Delhi today night at 10 p.m. I'm having a train ticket is available, which is a first class AC reservation is available. Now the train will be arriving the station by 10 p.m. IST today night. So to travel from Sikandarabad to New Delhi, I'm reaching to my railway station by 9.45. 
because we have to go to the railway station a bit early because we don't know when the train will be arriving the station we don't know that now for example i have reached to the railway station by 9:45 pm i am waiting for the train on the platform just now i reached to that railway station now i got the confirmation i got an announcement that train is running 2 hours late okay now just now i got that announcement the train is running 2 hours late here that means my train will be arriving the station by midnight 12 o'clock now tell me what can i do can i go back to my home and come back by midnight 12 o'clock no because it's not safe and the two during this midnight time i can't get much transportations the two i'm staying very far location from the railway station so so i can't go back and i can't come back again by midnight 12 o'clock now in this case what we can do where we can wait railway station in the railway station where can i wait do we have any waiting rooms available yes so in the railway station there is a waiting room is available in that waiting room we can able to wait now now tell me all the people can wait inside the waiting room no for example i am having a general ticket can you wait inside the waiting room no they won't allow so the people who are having only first class ac second class ac third class ac reservation only those people will be getting allowed to enter into the waiting room so that they can wait for some time till the train is arriving the station okay from there once the train is arriving the station we can catch the train we can start the travel from there onwards okay now that means what whenever the train is arriving the station a bit late till the train is arriving the station we can wait inside that waiting room so there is a location is available where we can able to wait for some time till the train is arriving the station so once the train is arriving the station we can catch the train we can start the travel from there onwards itself the two inside the waiting room all the people will not be getting allowed only those people who are having first class second class third class ac reservation people are available only those people will be getting allowed to wait inside that waiting room for some time okay now this is a general concept here like whatever the way we are having the waiting room like the similar way we are having a concept called as queue so what do you mean by a queue queue is nothing but a location the queue is nothing but a location where all the pending records are awaiting awaiting means these are waiting for what for processing by the queue member till any of the member is accepting the record the records will be waiting for some time inside a location that location is called as queue so queue is nothing but a location where all the pending lead records and the case records will be awaiting for processing by the queue member here how long time the record is waiting inside the queue so the record is waiting inside the queue until any of the queue member has accepted the record here that means we are waiting inside the room we can say the waiting room till the train is arriving the station here once the train is arriving the station we can come out from the waiting room we can catch the train we can start the travel like the similar way my record is waiting inside this particular queue till any of the queue member is available once a queue member has picked up the record the record entry will be removed from the queue from there the person will start working on the record as it is here now so in this case when coming to the queue queue is nothing but a location where all the pending lead records and the case records will be awaiting for the processing by the queue member now so as soon as whenever i'm placing the record inside the queue then queue member will be receiving one email notification automatically there is a record is waiting inside the queue whatever the queue members are available those people will be receiving an email notification dear case my you dear queue member there is a record is waiting inside the queue so please start working on this case record or the lead record now then how can we create this queue now when coming to the queue queue contains two things there are two parts are available for the queue the first one queue supporting objects okay queue supporting objects second one queue members okay queue members first one queue supporting objects second one queue members what do you mean by queue supporting objects queue supporting object is indicating what object records this queue can store inside this 
whatever the queue that we have, this queue will be holding some record. Then what object records the queue can hold? That will be indicated by queue supporting objects here. Like inside the waiting room, they're already having some guidelines. All the people can't wait inside the waiting room. Only those people who are having first class, second class, third class AC reservation, only those people can wait inside the waiting room. Like the similar way, even though I'm having so many objects of in Salesforce, all the object records we can't place inside the queue because queue won't support. Queue will be supporting only a few object records can be hold inside it. Then what object records the queue will support? Queue supports to store lead object records, case object records, other object records, feedback object, feedback question, feedback question set, feedback template, feedback request, performance cycle, goal, metric, macro, knowledge article version, user provisioning request, scorecard, quick test, coaching, other edition form, other edition form consent, like that it is supporting few objects along with all custom objects also. Okay, it will support all your custom objects also. But Q doesn't support your campaign records. Q doesn't, doesn't support account records, contact records, opportunity records, and then solution records, and then your product records, other object records it won't support here. Q will be supporting only few object records here. So now these are called as Q supporting objects. That means these are the various object records the Q will support to store inside this. Okay, now, second one. Once the records are waiting inside the queue, who can access these records? This will be accessible by queue members. Queue members means users. These are few users who can access your queue records. Okay, who can access your queue records? These are called as queue members. So, each and every queue contains two parts. First one, queue supporting objects which indicates what object records this queue can hold inside this. Second one, queue members, which indicates once the records are placed inside the queue, then who can access this record that will be indicated by the queue members over here. These are the two parts are available for the queue. Now, here you can raise a question, sir, what is the difference between a public group and a queue? If it is a public group, public group contains only users. Public group contains only users to whom you want to share the record. But Q contains members, that means users, and supporting object records also. Q can store some records also inside this here, and this can be accessible by Q members as well. Clear? Understood the concept now? Next. Now in this case, so let's see, come to a small scenario. Once a record has been placed inside the queue, for this queue, whatever the queue members are available, everybody will be getting the access automatically by default. That means they will be getting one email notification automatically. Dear member, a new record is waiting inside the queue. If you are free today, then please accept the record and start working on this here. Okay, so that as soon as whenever the member is accepting the record, automatically the record ownership will be transferring from Q to accepted member automatically by default. Okay, clear? Now, come to a small scenario. For example, assume that today I would like to have some lunch after my session here. So I would like to order this food through online. Okay so that i would like to take some outside food today so that i would like to make some order through online we have so many food delivery apps are available like we are having zomato and then swiggy we are having so many other apps are also available here through swiggy okay i have made an order here okay i have made an order okay to a restaurant okay to buy an item here a food item as soon as whenever i'm placing the order order will be going to the restaurant people Order will be going to the restaurant people here. Now the restaurant people has to confirm the order. Restaurant people has to confirm the order. That means whatever the item that I'm ordering, maybe that item may be there, may not be there. So the restaurant people has to confirm the order here. Once they confirm the order, okay, then automatically that order is going to go into the kitchen people here. Inside the kitchen, they're having so many people are available who are preparing these items over there. Now, so now the kitchen people will be preparing the order. 
once item is ready then automatically they will be indicating to the food delivery organization boss the item is ready the ready item is ready to pick up inside the restaurant here please allocate one of your okay delivery boys so as soon as the item is ready immediately a request will be placing inside the queue okay immediately the request is placing inside the queue over here that an item is waiting in students or restaurant this has to be get delivered in students or location the customer is waiting over there now in this case what it will do inside this particular area whatever the restaurant that we have nearby that restaurant whatever the delivery boys are available all these people are getting one email notification there is an item is waiting in so and so restaurant it has to be delivered in so and so location the customer's location it will be indicating that suppose if any of the delivery boys ready to pick up that order if we want to deliver that item he will accept that one okay he will be accepting that one once you accept the order automatically it will be indicating the delivery boy has been assigned that is some mukesh kumar he is on the way to pick up your order from the restaurant he will be delivering to you here yeah. that means what here whatever the food delivery apps that we have these are purely working on queues nothing different everything is purely queues as soon as whenever i am placing the order to the restaurant my record will be in the queue over here so once they have confirmed the order request will be going to the kitchen people because kitchen people are not free they are preparing so many other items also here so my request will be in the queue from the based on the queue they will be keep on preparing one by one one by one items here once items have been prepared it will go to the another queue because to deliver the application if any of the delivery boy has been selected the order to deliver then automatically the item will be getting assigned to that particular person over here from there this person is responsible to deliver the item from that restaurant to the customer's location from there we can able to track the location of that customer person over here these are purely working on queues like the similar way for example i would like to reserve a cab to travel from some amirpet to some dilshik nagar so whenever we are going to raising a order through the cab delivery apps it may be ola meru cabs car taxi zoom cars anything whatever here as soon as whenever i'm raising this order now it is sending this request to that nearby the cab drivers over here so now what are the location that we have specified the pickup location so now it will be sending this request notification to all the cab delivery people so now who are available in that location who are ready to take up that order here now if any of the person is able to pick up that person immediately will click on the accept button automatically that person the request will be assigned to that particular cab driver here now from there we can see the cab driver details also we can man so we can able to make a call to the cab driver to check where exactly he is available and then we can catch the cab and we can travel also so all these applications are purely working on queues internal concept is purely queues nothing different it will be keep on transferring from one queue to another queue also so whatever the records that we have in salesforce we can transfer the record from a user to queue or queue to user or queue to queue also here we can transfer all the four combinations will be supported we can transfer the record from a user to user user to queue queue to user queue to queue all the four combinations salesforce supports okay whatever the way that you want we can keep on okay transfer the record to the respective queues as well here okay understood the concept now now so in this case when coming to the salesforce r we can create one or more number of queues not only okay not only creating one queue we can create n number of queues also inside your salesforce r each queue will be having queue supporting objects and then queue members that means each queue will be indicating what object records the queue can hold and who can access this queue record so both will be available these are the two parts will be available for each and every queue queue supporting objects and the queue members both will be available here now so now in this case what are the queues that we have configured all the queues information will store inside an object called as group object group is a standard object in salesforce which contains all the queues information now here you can raise a question sir sometime before you said that public groups information will store inside the group object now all the public groups information queues information will store inside the same object that is group object 
okay, all the public groups and the queues information will store inside group object. Now, then how can we differentiate whether it is a public group or queue? So in this case, inside this group object, we have a field called as type field. Okay, there is a field called as type field. Now this type field is indicating what type of group it is. If it is a public group, if it is a public group, then the type value will be regular. Regular. If it is a Q, if it is a Q, the type field value will be Q. Based on this type field, we can differentiate is it a public group or is it a Q? If it is a public group, it will be having the type field value as regular. If it is having the option as Q, then it is a Q. So based on this type field value, we can differentiate is it public group or is it Q? Okay, now. So now here in this case here, once the records has been placed inside the queue, then any of the queue member will accept the record here. Suppose for example here, assume that we are having some four queue members are available here. Okay, we have four queue members are available. As soon as whenever your record is placed inside the queue, suppose today if you are free to work on that, if you don't have any other work, then just you can accept that, I can start working on that record over here. As soon as once you click on the accept button on the record, automatically the record ownership will be transferring from queue to the accepted member. That will be coming on my name. So I will be the responsible person for that record from now on works. Okay. So that we can keep on transfer the record ownership from a user to queue or queue to user or queue to queue or user to user. All the four combinations we can transfer. That facility is available here. Okay. Now. Let's see. Simple concept here. Come to a small scenario. Simply in one word, I can say Q is like as a buffet dinner. Okay, Q is like as a buffet dinner. Generally, how the buffet dinner will look like? Hmm. Now, do we have any restriction? First of all, you have to eat this, next one, this one, next one, this one, like that? No. So all the items are available okay, in front of that you okay on the table. All the items are available on the table. Whatever the item that you want, we can have it here. Unlimited. No limitations at all. Any item, whatever you want, we can pick it up and then we can place inside the plate. We can have it here. No restrictions here. No limitations available here. Like the similar way here also, all the records are placing inside the queue. Queue numbers are available. They can able to pick up any of the requests. They can start working on that. There is no restriction. Compulsorily, this request has to be processed by only this person. And then this request has to be processed by only this person. There is no restrictions at all. Suppose if you're free today, if you're ready to work on all the cases and accept all the requests one by one, you can start working on this. Okay, there is no limitations at all here. Now, in this case, how the people will know there are some records are waiting in the queue. As soon as whenever the record is placed inside the queue, whatever the queue members are available, all the members will be getting one email notification automatically. Dear person or dear service executive or dear queue member, there is a record is waiting inside the queue. This is a queue details over here. So once you go to the queue, they can able to see the records. They can start working on by accepting the record from their onwards. Okay, clear? Now, make a note of this one. Q. Q is nothing but a location where all the pending lead and case records will get awaited for the processing By a queue member. The processing by a queue member. Queue contains two parts. First one, queue supporting objects. Second one, queue members. Q 
Use supporting object in the sense it describes a group of objects whose records can be placed can be placed inside the queue. Now, queue supports the below Salesforce objects. For example, lead object records, case object, order, feedback, feedback question, feedback request, performance cycle, goal, metric, macro, knowledge article version, authorization form, authorization form consent, etc. plus all custom objects. All custom objects. Q members. It describes a group of users who can access the Q records. Who can access the query cards? Now, note we can create one or more queues inside an organization. We can create one or more queues inside an organization. While placing the record inside the queue, inside the queue, record owner will be owner will be queue. Now, as soon as the record has been placed inside the queue. All the queue members all the queue members will receive an email notification. Email notification. The records will get weighted. The records will be weighted inside the queue until any of the queue member accept the record accept the record or it might have been transferred to other queue or it might have been transferred to other queue because once i'm placing the item inside that okay once i'm placing the order it will go to the queue okay for the restaurant people once they are confirming the order, then it will be going to that another queue to the kitchen so that the kitchen people will prepare. Once item is ready, then they will be placing into another queue so that Ricard is ready to pick up here. So that it will be placing inside that queue so that delivery boys will be getting assigned from there. Like that. We can transfer from user to queue, queue to queue also. Once the user accepts the records, then Owner will get transferred to the user, to the accepted member. member. Now, all the queues information will get resides inside the group object inside the group object. All the queue supporting objects information, 
will get resides inside the QS subject. All the Q members' information will get stored inside the group member object. These are the three objects internally Salesforce will use to store your QS information. And one more thing, we have the session on Sunday also, and then Tuesday also. Monday will be the off. Monday we don't have the session. And then Tuesday we are having the session through online. Till Tuesday we are having online sessions. Okay. Tomorrow we have the session classroom as usual. Okay. Sunday will be online session, and Tuesday also online session, no classrooms.
done with the points now let's see how can we create a queue and how can we transfer the records ownership to the required queues now let's see take a small use case create a queue hyderabad sales queue by adding lead object as the supporting object and development user as the queue number in development user as the queue member then how can we create this queue now let's see click on setup menu search for the option queues click on new button to create a new queue enter the queue label and the name enter the queue email id select the checkbox send notifications to members select the queue supporting objects from the pick list select the queue members from the pick list and then click on save button this is the navigation to create your own queue in salesforce
Hello, excuse me, sir. Yes. Yes, tell me. Done with the navigation. Now let's see. So let me show you how can we create the queue inside your Salesforce R and how can we transfer the record ownership to the queue. Now let's see. I'm going to my Salesforce R. I'm creating a queue now. Go to the setup menu. Search for the option queues. Click on queues. So we don't have any queues has been configured till now. It's an empty. So now I would like to create a new queue. Specify the queue label, queue name, and then the queue email ID here. Queue email ID should be different from your Salesforce organization email ID. And then specify the checkbox send the email to members that means as soon as whenever i'm placing the record inside the queue you want me to send the email notification to all the members or not select the queue supporting objects over here these are the various objects okay whose records can be placed inside the queue remaining objects it won't support and the users okay which users can access this queue records okay now let's see click on save button that's it simple now let's see here i'm indicating the queue label here hyderabad sales queue queue email id i'm giving as my personal email id over here select the checkbox send the email to members now i'm selecting the lead object as queue supporting object here lead object even though the queue is supporting to store these many number of object records now i am restricting to the queue don't store all these object records please store only lead object records whenever i'm selecting this object lead now this queue can store only lead object records not other object records over here okay now now select that queue member that means once a record has been placed inside this queue that is hyderabad sales queue who can access these records for that one i am selecting this user as development user he is a queue member right now here like as these are the delivery boys here these are the items which are placing inside this queue here okay now click on save button as soon as once i click on this save button now immediately here immediately the queue record will be getting created queue has been prepared now who is the member of this queue now who is the member of this queue development user now let's go to the development user account let's verify i'm logging into the development user now So what is the development user's username? User development dot D59. observe this one so this is the development users account over here now when you go to the lead object here because that queue is supporting to store what object records lead object go to the lead object over here now go to this enhanced list view options now tell me do you have that queue name is available here queue name what is the queue name that have given hyderabad sales do you have the queue name here yes that means what generally this is called as what these are called as list view options do you know how to add the list view options yes we have discussed there is a lengthy navigation is available have we created this list view option here have i created this one manually 
No. Who is adding this one? Salesforce is adding. When, whenever a user is member of the queue, to check what records are waiting inside the queue, the queue name will be populating in the objects list TV options automatically by default. This is additional option. Okay. Whenever I'm creating a queue, if I'm selecting a user as a member of the queue, for that member in that supporting object, this queue member will be adding as list view option by default over here. Then what is the use of this one? If you want to see what records are waiting inside the queue, then just you will be selecting this one. It will list out what items are waiting inside the queue. Suppose if any of the item is waiting over here, suppose he wants to work on that record, just he can select the checkbox over here, click on accept button. Once you click on accept button, automatically the record ownership will be transferring from queue to the accepted member. Who is the accepted member here? Development user. So the record ownership will be transferring from queue to development user automatically. Okay, this is the functionality. We no need to add the queue names inside this list view options manually that will be populating automatically by Salesforce. Clear? Now. So now let's see. Now I'm placing the record here. Now my queue has been created. So this is the queue. I'm placing the record here. Let me go back to my sales application. This is the administrator account here. Go to the lead object now. This is a lead object. Now I'm placing the record. Click on Christian Akin. Who is the owner right now? Training batch user. I want to transfer this record to home, to the queue. Okay, I want to place this record inside that queue here. How can we place the record inside the queue? Just you can click on change owner. Now, then select the owner type as queue. Okay, select the owner type as queue. Now select the queue name. What is the queue name here? Hyderabad sales queue. It is populating that queue name here. Now select the checkbox, send a notification email here. So upon creating this queue, whatever the email ID that I have given, queue email ID, it will send one email notification automatically here. Now click on change owner. Now tell me who is the owner of this record right now? Hyderabad. Sales queue. That means this is waiting inside queue. So the queue is the owner of this record right now. This is not assigned to a user. Now the record is waiting inside that queue. So the queue is the owner of this record right now. Here. Queue is the owner of the record. As soon as whenever the record is placing inside the queue, automatically the queue member will be receiving one email notification. Now let me go to my email account here. I will be receiving that email notification automatically that a record is waiting inside the queue. Now it is indicating this email notification here from training that user lead. Miss Kristen Akin, okay, this is from the company Athena Home Products has been assigned to you. Now this is waiting inside this particular queue over here. Now this is the link to see the lead record over here. Now because it's a queue member here. Now here in this case, once the record is waiting inside the queue, then what the member can do? Go to this member, refresh this. Do we have any records waiting inside the queue now? Yes, that means he is the development user account here. Because he is the development user. Development user is opening the queue over here. Inside the queue, it is open. It is going to be observing this record. This is the record is waiting inside the queue. Who is the owner right now? Not development user. Who is the owner of the record? Hyderabad. Still the record is waiting. Still the record is waiting inside the queue. For example, here this is the delivery food of food product is waiting inside the queue. Assume that I'm a delivery person. I'm ready to okay deliver this item here. Then what I will do? Simply I will select this item. I will click on accept button here. Now select the record now. Click on accept. Whenever I'm accepting this record now, who will be the responsible person from now onwards for this record? Myself now, right? Click on accept button. So automatically, record ownership will be transferring to that development user. Do we have any records waiting inside the queue now? No. 
now. Let's go to the lead object here. See the record. Open that Kristen. I can record now. Who is the owner of the record right now? Let's see. Who is the owner now? Development user here. Okay, we are not transferring the record ownership manually. It is doing this is doing by the Salesforce automatically by default upon okay, accepting the record. This is the functionality. Clear? So we can keep on place the records inside that queue. Automatically, queue member will start working on those records by accepting them over here. Okay? Clear? Understood the concept now? So this is the way we are going to placing the records inside the queue with the manual. It's a manual mechanism. What we did, we are having our lead records are available. These lead records I'm opening manually here. Click on the change owner link and then select the new owner. That means the queue. I'm selecting the queue. I'm transferring here. If I'm doing it manually, one by one, one by one, one by one, if the number of lead records are more, then what can I do? Is it possible for me to transfer each lead record manually? No. If I'm having some 10 records or 50 records or 100 records, then I can manage by spending some one to two hours of time. So if it is some thousands of records, lakhs of records, how can we transfer them? For that one, we are using the help of an automation mechanism here. That is called as assignment rules. That is called as assignment rules. So how to assign the record to a user or queue dynamically at runtime? time? Okay, we'll see in tomorrow's session. Tomorrow we'll see how can we transfer the record to the required users of the queue at runtime by using assignment rules. We'll see practically. Okay, now tomorrow we are going to discuss about the various types of assignment rules. Lead assignment rules, case assignment rules. I will show you how to implement lead lead assignment rules. You have to work on case assignment rules here. Tomorrow I will discuss about two more features. I will discuss about the concept of web to lead. You have to work on web to case. I will discuss how to configure email to case. How to create a case record by sending email notification. Like we are having support email ID, support at the rate some deal.com. If I'm sending the email notification to that, how is a record, case record will be getting created? I will show you with the practical concept here. How can we implement? Okay, now. So now here, so don't miss that tomorrow's session here. That is also very, very important features are available. So tomorrow we are going to discuss. So we are done with the transferring the record ownership manually here. How to create the records, how to assign the records we have done. Tomorrow we'll see the concept of assignment rules, web to lead, web to case, and the email to case, and then automation rules also. That means auto response rules. And then we'll be having the profile concept. These features are comes under profiles topic only here. Okay. Sunday we'll be having the profile session so that we can close it off. Okay. On Tuesday, I will be discussing some more features over there, like as a dashboards concept here, and then business processes so that we can complete. And then after that, on one Sunday, Saturday, we'll be discussing about the validation rules concept. Okay. So do the practice on these features today here. Tomorrow we'll see some different functionalities.